Hey guys and welcome back to Born Traveller. Right, in this video I'm in Gory in Georgia. What is this place famous for? It's famous for the dictator Stalin. He was born here, he grew up here and we're gonna go and see his house and his museum. Okay, let's get going. So first of all, who was Stalin? Stalin was the head of the USSR um, in its most powerful years between I think around like the early 20s to the mid 1950s. He ruled for about 25 to 30 years and he was a brutal dictator. So I'll take a walk around the park because the museum's not open for another half an hour and I'll tell you about Stalin himself, who he was. Stalin was born in the year 1879 to this kind of poor town here in Gory in the middle of Georgia. It's not a significant town even today. It's still kind of like a very small town really. It's not really a big city. But this is where he was born. His father was brutal to him. He used to beat him up. Uh, so Stalin, grew up, he grew up in a very un, unwelcome family, you know, a very hard childhood. But Stalin was a very clever person. He graduated school two years ahead of when he should have done. And he got a scholarship at the university in Tbilisi, which is the capital of Georgia. So after graduating from university, he got into politics and he became Bolshevik. Uh, the Bolsheviks basically is a communist party and they follow the works of Karl Marx. They were led by a guy called Lenin. Lenin was the leader of the Bolshevik movement. Um, and basically, still to this day, Lenin and Stalin are renowned as the godfathers of communism all over the world, including China and obviously most prominent nowadays, North Korea. Basically, Stalin was an agitator. His job was to cause trouble and basically um, build the movement of the Communist Party to basically get them to power. This is before 1917 uh, and, and basically he got locked up and he got sent to Siberia on several occasions. He escaped, they sent him back. But during his time in Siberia it really toughened him up. He, he learnt that life was really hard. He did have a young wife but she died really young and it basically made Stalin a very very cold human being. He hated humanity and he had no feelings for them. And that's really what led to his brutal dictatorship. There's quite a big chain of events that happened basically that brought Stalin to power. But basically, eventually Stalin got into power before the Second World War and he basically killed everybody. He killed anybody who was against him, uh, including his own family at some point. So if he did anything wrong, anything that he didn't like, he would basically, you would either get shot on the spot or you would get sent to what I call a gulag, which is a hard labor work camp. So one of the work camps, basically, they built the train line that goes from Moscow to Beijing. We know it now as the Orient Express. That's basically the train line. It goes from, from Europe right through to Beijing, um, through Mongolia. And that is basically was built on gulag blood. Um, there's a lot of history through that, but basically that's what Stalin did. He just locked up any opponents or anybody who caused any trouble or did anything wrong. Stalin embraced communism and he started something called collectivization. I can't say it very well, but that's basically it. And basically what this means is that he, the government collect all the crops from the farmers and then redistribute that evenly throughout the population. The farmers hated this. This was a time when 98% of the population relied on farming. They hated it and they hated Stalin, but he was brutal. No one could stop him. The only person who could sleep at night safely was him. Anybody else, in, in, including his generals, were fearful of their lives. It wasn't uncommon for him to purge, to kill anybody, just on suspicion that they might be against him. This is just my opinion, but the only thing that Stalin really ever achieved was he really did help win the Second World War. I think without him, or without Russia, we probably wouldn't have won the Second World War. Russia really did defeat the, the Nazis. Not on their own, but yeah. America and Britain on their own still probably wouldn't have been able to defeat the Germans. And basically after the Second World War came the Cold War. This was a war that wasn't fought. It was just a threat of war between the USA and Europe and the USSR and China. Basically it was a nuclear threat of nuclear war. And this all came about through a conference between Stalin, Truman and Winston Churchill in Tehran in 1943. At that conference, it was decided what would happen to Germany after the war, after they were defeated. And it also basically created the United Nations and it carved up the world as we know it today. And the world map we know today 
is pretty much exactly how it was carved in that meeting all those years ago. So those three men sat there drinking tea and basically dictated how our world is, the map lines, the divisions between all the countries. And of course, around the world, as we know, still to this day, conflicts go on. Israel, Palestine, uh, India, Pakistan, all these conflicts pretty much came about through this. So Stalin had a huge, huge impact on our world, probably more than most people recognize. He was a world leader that changed the world forever. Uh, whether you say for the good or the bad, he did change it. Um, after his death, everything changed. Um, they moved away from the brutal dictatorship and became a little bit more liberal. So this is like a main street of uh, Gori. And if you look behind me, there's Stalin's uh, house. It's pretty much central within Gori. It's like the most important thing within this city. So here is Stalin's house and behind it is the museum. So I've got to confess, I didn't actually find any research on how Stalin's life was, whether he grew up poor or whether he grew up rich. My feeling is he grew up middle class because this actually looks like quite a decent house for the times it was built. You know, this is a quite decent looking house. Might look anything today, but in 1879, this would have been quite a rich house, I think. So this here, guys, is Stalin's train. This is the famous train that Stalin had built specifically for himself so he could travel around the USSR in luxury. Uh, as you can see, uh, the number is 3878. I don't know if that has any significance, but we can quite easily see the, you know, the Soviet uh, hammer and sickle above it. This train basically allowed Stalin to travel around the USSR in luxury. Um, you know, and uh, the Americans were always trying to track it. Uh, it was quite a very, very well kept secret, this train. Most people probably in the West didn't even know that this train existed. Um, Stalin kept everything very secret and uh, obviously this was times before satellites so very hard for the Americans to ever spot this. What always fascinates me is like when you touch things like this, this is like living history, you know, if this could talk the stories it could tell. And you can see like obviously now it's not in great condition but the, the work, you know, the, the, this would have been very luxurious when it was 50 years ago. Okay, let's go and have a look at the museum now. So the other thing Gori is famous for is its fortress, which you don't really see when you come in the city, but if you walk around the city you can quite easily spot it, it's right on the top of a hill. So we're going to go and look at that now, uh, so it's about a 10-15 minute walk from the State Museum to the to the castle, so it's not too far. So as you can see here, this is a really nice bit of Gori, um, I assume this is quite a posh area, quite an expensive area. I'm out of breath because that is quite a hike but for whatever reason it says no entry but it's in Georgian now, there is a say there is it in English it says no entry however there's a security guard that obviously protects it and he said you can go up so I have no idea I've just been allowed a place I don't think you're allowed to go so it looks like they're actually rebuilding it here look it says the uh, rehabilitation works so here it's being rebuilt so I assume that's why you're not allowed, to, it's supposed to be allowed up here because they've not finished it. Basically it's a building site. So don't do what I've done. Uh, you know, you know, if you do do this, you're taking your own risk. I mean, I only did it because the security guard told me I could. And he was with me the whole way when I walked up. So as you can see, they've rebuilt the wall here. And we've got a view of the whole city. You can get a sense of what the castle on the outside walls looks like. As you see in the middle, there's not much, but obviously we've got the Georgian flag, and then there's not much in the middle, but we've got a nice outer, outer wall.
So guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. I just want to talk about something really important, travel insurance. If you've never thought about it when you travel, you should really get travel insurance. Travel insurance is one of the most important things you can do whilst you're traveling. And the place I recommend to get your travel insurance is Safety Wings. Safety Wings I've been using for around two years now. There is no other company out there that offer the same service and affordability as Safety Wings. Safety Wings offer comprehensive travel insurance to anybody from pretty much any country in the world. And the great thing about that is you can get the insurance whilst you've already started to travel. So if you're aged between 18 and 69, you can get travel insurance from Safety Wings. COVID-19 cover is included and you can also download a visa form to prove that you have travel insurance for any border controls. So if you decide that Safety Wings is for you, please click on the link in the right hand corner and help support my channel in a small way. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, definitely worth a trip coming here. You know, you should really learn about Stalin, who he was, what he did, you know, because it's really important in our world history to remember the brutal things that have happened in our history so we don't repeat it. So please remember to subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification button, and I'll see you next time.